Good. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me fine? Okay, so I'm Andrea Barzani. I'm from Italy. He's Daniel Bianco. And we had this little project about playing with cars and traffic information, and we just want to share our fun research with you. And I think you're the perfect audience for this. So we gave this presentation at Black Hat and, and other, one other conference as well. But I mean, I'm very honored to be here and explaining all of this to you. So as you can see, we have some gear here that we brought in the States. And as you can imagine, that wasn't a very easy thing to do. So because when you travel with this kind of thing in the baggage, you get always these kind of things. So TSA baggage of inspection notice. And this, this is a, our FN transmitter, which kind of looks like a bomb. And so when the TSA officers you know, got it at the inspection, there's a small switch over there. So he got it. And he said, OK, let's try it. Boom! So apparently, TSA officers are allowed to make those kind of jokes. Well, if you made those jokes, you get arrested. So I found that to be very, very, very amusing. But anyway, we got the gear. It was, they broke it, but we fixed it. So hopefully, we are going to demo the thing uh, for you. We also have a very, you know, a slightly big antenna over there, which we call the sterilizer. So if you ask silly questions at the QA, we just point it at you with full power. So injecting traffic information signal. So what's this about? So this is about one hacker, or well, I mean, I hope so, getting a new car with a new satellite navigation system and traffic information channel going on. And before even driving the car, thinking, oh, wow, that could be interesting. I could play with that. Let's see what's going on. So in-car satellite navigation system uh, in Europe and in, in other places, I'm going to go in detail about that. So they can get dynamic traffic information. And the system being used for that is called RDS-TMC. Okay? So we'll show how we can hijack these kind of messages and do pretty much whatever we want. So why do we want to do it? Do it because hardware hacking is fun, because it's very 80s, because we're you know using FM RDS, so 80s, which means cool. So and also the problem is that drivers usually implicitly trust this kind of information on the car. So my dad has a similar navigation system. He sees an alert over there. Oh, I'm so going to do that. So. This could be a slight problem. And more important, chicks will melt when you show this. And we're going to prove that to you, which is basically the whole point. I mean, we don't hack for money, we hack for chicks. <laughs> so radio data system. So RDS is, is used for transmitting data over FM. Whenever you have a station and you see the name of a station on your radio, that's RDS doing some work for you. Okay? So it's used pretty much everywhere. 100% of radios nowadays, they display RDS system. It's describing a standard. So what happens here? Here we have, can you see the pointer somewhere? OK. So we have the mono uh, section of the MC, FN spectrum. We have a pilot tone at 19 kilohertz. Then we got the stereo information. And then at the 57K subcurve, we have the RDS signal, which, what are you doing? Which is used for, <laughs> I mean, I'm like talking to people here. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so at 57K, we get zeros and one over there, okay? So not audio, we get something that is going to be demodulated and we can get data and it's all cool, we have the digital word. So RDS TMC was first introduced in Germany in 1997, you know, where else, Germany. So it was implemented out in Europe in the following year. So Italy got it in 2004 and just so you know, it's a very old technology like RDS, it's very 80s, but Australia are, is getting RDS TMC in 2007, right? And most satellite navigation systems are using this kind of uh, traffic message channel thing only in the last couple of years. So it's very, very relevant. relevant. So what happens, you got your traffic messages like the cops, the you know, stations on the highway, they detect a queue or whatever. And they're sent to FM broadcasters. And then they are going to send the information over their RDS stream. And then that's going to be pick, picked up by your car. So it's implemented in most, so if you buy a car and you get a satellite navigation system within the car, so it's built in, then you, most of the times you get TMC. Or if you buy high-end uh, portable uh, satellite navigation system, you get TMC. If you buy low-end navigation system, you can buy an external antenna and you pay for it, you install an additional software, and you can get RDS TMC capabilities. Um, TMC is available in both free and commercial services, and I'm going to go in detail uh, about that. And it can also be transmitted over digital radio. And our research applies as well. So that's a RDS TMC terminal. 
So we can see we have the traffic event list, so we have a very cute icon. Then we got the event, so there's the pa patchy fog, the first two, and the slow traffic. We got the name of the road, and then, so those are Italian names, roads, so the, the name is weird. I'm sorry for that, I apologize. And then we got how far the event is, and if you click on that, or whatever, you press a button, then you get a map, and then you can see where the event is. And this is like interactive, you can see the event list. So if an event is affecting your route, then you're going to get a pop-up in some circumstances. Okay, so you can either browse the existing messages or it's going to pop up for you. So the issue, there's no form of authentication of the data. There's some form of encryption supported, but it's not really encryption, and I'm going to explain about that. And anyway, even if it was properly done, is absolutely irrelevant to our goals. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to send fake TMC messages against our victim by using off-the-shelf components. So we didn't want to spend like $10,000 for doing this, more or less like 100. And you'll be the judge of our results. This is the victim. So it's very cool when you're doing IT talks, like you got the victim slide and it's like a box or a server. This is a fucking car. <laughs> that was my Second, secondary motivation for doing the talk. The first one was chicks, as I mentioned already. So this is a big theme. So first thing we need to do is like sniff RDS information for actually understanding the protocol and see what's going on. So we need to get a raw FM signal, right? We don't want the audio component. I want the whole spectrum so that I can play with it and I can demodulate my RDS subcarrier. So the easiest way for doing that, you buy a PCI audio video tuner, the cards that you put in a PC for you know, watching television or radio. And what happens, so this is the board, and that's a normal PC by the way, without a case, so, but this way is more hockey and cool. And so what happens, you can uh, hijack one of the pins on the board and you will get the raw FM signal and then you can do whatever you want with it. So if you go to that link, there's a list of cards, you can find tuners that are known to have this MPX pin available. So we use the one using the FM1216 module from Philips which is available on like 80% of boards that have FM and tuning capabilities. So once we have the carrier, we build a circuit using a TDA 7330B, which is one of the most common chips using cars for demodulating RDS. Okay, so that chip does the job for us. And then what we want to do is we want to able to read the data, right? And so we use a programmable integrated controller for converting that information into serial, so we can hook that up to a PC, and then we can see stuff, and then we can decode whatever is going on there. And we wrote our own software as RDSD, which is available open source for decoding RDS, and specifically RDS DMC. So there's one other pro project going on, RDSD, you will see there, which tries to do the same thing, but it's outdated, it's not been updated in a long time, and we just wanted to focus on TMC, and they don't. So that's why we did our own thing, plus it's cool. So, so this is the board, which is this thing, and there, that's the pin we hijack TMC. Uh, so maybe we can turn these lights off so that they can see the slides better. I don't know. I I, I don't know if you, can, you you can see this properly, but anyway. So so this is triggered. So you might are you busy or shall I talk? No, yeah, I'm busy. Okay, he's busy. Okay, cool. So sniffing RDS. So what happens? We have the VHF tuner. Okay, we get the MPX signal. We pass it over a circuit. This is the circuit. Okay, very crude thing. So here we got a TDA, which is this thing here, and then we got logic for converting this to serial. So it comes in MPX, it gets out serial and zeros and one, which is cool. So we take the digital signal and we pass it over the serial input of the PC, and then we have our RDS decoder software, okay? So main components, one TDA, 7430OB, which is like, you know, 10 bucks, a peak microcontroller, which is like seven bucks, and you know, this board doesn't cost more than, yes, $16 or whatever. Assembly. So you can see our very advanced lab. So we even got a bed near the assembly for like burning the circuit. So because we wanted to attend and nurse, you know, our assembly. This is circuit. So if you want to build it on your own, you can, you know, get the slides on our website. You can do it. It's very easy. I mean, we're not technical guys, right? We type on the keyboard all day. So if we were able to do this, anyone can do. 
Trust me on that. So peak programming. So we program a peak for converting the RGS signal. We use a custom peak programmer, which is a variation of very well-known programmer. So it's all you know standard stuff. And what we get out are zeros and one if the quality is good. So the demodulator chip knows when the signal is bad or when the signal is good because it performs some sort of checks and thing. So if the data is bad, we get an asterisk and a plus. Okay. So what you can do, you can either ignore sequences with bad data or you can replace them with zeros and one. And if you feel lucky, maybe I mean it's going to work. So we program. Uh, the peak with our own assembler code, which is available, open source, you can download in, have fun with it. So you can do everything that we did here. So this is the output. So that's an oscilloscope. That's the RDS signal sniffed over the air. So there's a wave, and that represents zeros and one. And that's one example of what we, we can get. So zeros and one, uh, that's a very crappy signal. So we can see some zeros and ones, and the other one are crappy data. Can we get a demo? or? OK, no, well, no, no fix it. Yeah. Thank you. He's my slave. Oh. Not in a sexual way. <laughs> Should be careful. So this is the RDS protocol. It's very simple. It's, made, it's designed to be space efficient, because there's not much room for sending data. It's not like we have wireless in here. It's like radio. So we have a group of 104 bits. We have four blocks. Every block is 26 bits. 16 bits of data and 10 bits of check word. The check word is like a checksum. It's being used for, it's, it's computed against the data and we can see if the packet was good or not. Of course, this is not like, you know, normal checksum which are very reliable. Since we have, you know, like 26 bits, it's not too much. It's binary, it's zeros and ones. Even if the check word is right, it doesn't necessarily mean that the data is good. You can get good checksum, checksum, checksum that matches the data, but still it's not good. So not a very safe method. And that's why sometimes on your radio, when you see the program name, it's like garbled. It's like radio, question mark, whatever. Even if the check on some computation is, going, is working, you can get bad data. The first block of every group structure has a PI code, which is a program identifi identification code. Every radio station has one code. It's 16 bits. And block two, we have a group code which is used for advertising what kind of packet this will be. So with RDS, we can sell, we can send the station name, we can send alternate frequencies, we can send you the time, we can send you the, the, the information about current channel being broadcasting a um, traffic program. So that's advertised by the group code. So depending on what group code we get, which is a four bits code, those remaining five bits over there, they change. Then we got B0, one bit is for version. TP is this traffic program. It's one if it, a traffic program is going on. It's zero if there's no traffic program going on. And that's being used because you can tell your radio, stop the CD or the cassette when there's a traffic information program, which you know drives crazy most people that you know buy radio for the first time. At least I remember 15 years ago, my dad was going crazy. Oh, I want to listen to cassette and then use information. But so that's the fucker that does that. And PTY tells you what kind of music you're listening to. It could be jazz, country, blues, whatever. So in some radios you can tell, I only want to listen to jazz music, and then you can do that. I've never seen that being used at all. But anyway, it's there. So TMC uses uh, RDS in this fashion. So we have the PA code, of course, that you know, should be there. Group code, B0, TP, PDY. And then we've got three bits, TF and DP. Then we've got a, a direction beat, a PN beat, the extent, so the extent of the event, event and location. So let's go in details in all of this. So this is a TMC message. How it's going to be, you know, uh, used. So TF and D are used for multi-group messages. So in TMC, we can either get our information in one group structure, or we can get our information in more group structures. So if you want to send more information, they can do that. We only concern with single group messages here because it's easier. DP is duration and persistence. I got an accident, we estimate it's going to last for one hour. Or you got a queue, we estimate it's going to last for three hours. We got telef emergency telephones not working on the highway, that's an all day event. So that's being used for telling you how long the message should be stored on your satellite navigation system. 
Diversion advice. If it's zero, we do not, the satellite navigation system does not recommend UI diversion. Okay, so suppose there's a weather message like rain. The satellite navigation system is not going to say, oh my God, there's rain, please use a different road. No, that's not going to happen. But if there's like, you know, a major accident on the highway, then the satellite navigation is going to pop up a window saying, you know, there's an accident, you really want to go somewhere else. And then you can decide if you to detour, so calculate a new route which eludes that accident, or to stick on your current path. Um, PN is used for direction, so this we want to be space efficient, right? So we have a location code on a highway, and then with that bit, we says if the event is affecting one direction or the other one. And also we got the extent, so the event extension. We can get a queue, which is like three miles long, four mile longs, or one mile long, okay? So that's what it's used for. And then the event code, which actually says us what's going on. So there's a table on every side of the navigation system with predefined codes. So the satellite navigation system gets the code, it converts it to a human readable message, and then you get your event. Same thing for the location code. So there's, no, there's not enough space for sending GPS coordinates. So what happens, every satellite navigation system in every country has its own location database table. And in that table, you're going to map location codes with GPS coordinates and road names as well, okay? so. One important thing to understand is that we can only send and receive messages about predefined location codes. We cannot send the message wherever we want, like here, not only on roads. In most cities, you can also send messages in the city, in ports, depend. But anyway, it's a predefined location table. There's a standard for the location table. Some countries gives you a public uh, table so you can download it on the internet or sometimes you need to hack your satellite navigation system for getting it so you got your DVD for your navigation system you do strings on it oh oops I can see a location code but well, you're not supposed to do that so we built our own tool uh, uh, SRDSD simple RDS decoder so it uh, performs nearly full RDS TMC decoding. It's the only tool we are aware of that does that, except of course satellite navigation systems. So you can get text and HTML output. It's very easy to use. And you can pass a location table to the tool. So it's going to convert your location code to actually GPS coordinates and stuff. So you get a row. Does it work? No. Bitch. So you get a row signal, which is zeros and one. So the first thing you need to do is lock in on DPI code because that's where your RDS stream starts. DPI code is public most of the times. You can download very big Excel sheets on, on the internet with all the FM stations and you can get DPI code. But don't worry, if you don't know about DPI code, it's simple, the most recurring string in the stream because it appears in the first packet of every RDS group. So you just use the minus capital P option and you can find the most recovery stream, which in this case is 5218. And that's also uh, a hint. Um, the first digit of DPI code, it depends on the country. And so we know that 5 is Italy, so that's our candidate. And then you can use it for decoding the row stream. Okay? And then you can see the packets going on. So this is like Ethereal or Wireshark for RDS messaging. So this is a standard RDS messages. It's a 0A group, is a t um, tuning information. Okay? And this is also the one that gives you the name of the session. And in every packet, we can get only two letters. So we got RT here. And also the tool gives you the collected letters. So the name of this station is RTL102.5, and here we got RT, okay? So this is very useful because when you're messing with such a short protocol and you got zeros and ones, even if all the zeros and ones are gobbled up, you're going to get something that makes sense because it's always going to decode, right? So one way for checking it that you're actually getting the real thing and you're not messing up the circuit completely is checking the name of the session. If it makes sense, then it means your tuning is good, everything is working, okay? Or of course you can also check the check word, but as I said, it's not very reliable. So this is the our tool decodes that just for, you know, seeing things going on and actually uh, confirming that you're getting a good dump. 8A group, so 8A groups are used for the CMC message itself. So this is a single group message. 
is about slow traffic. So that's code 115 is slow traffic. And then we have the location, which is 3084, which is a very, very big road in Rome. And you get this all the times. We are in Italy, remember? So you're flooded by slow traffic and everywhere an accident. And here, there you get a Google Maps link, so you can click on it and you can see if actually your message makes sense. We also get a version that plot everything on Google Maps and I'm going to show you that. And this is a free aid group, so very important thing. This is used for advertising the TMC capability on that channel. Because it's not that your satellite navigation system is going to watch on all frequencies, it needs some things that advertises the fact that TMC is being used, and that's using the free aid group, which is a general packet, it's not specific to TMC, but this packet has an application ID of 525550, which is the number reserved for TMC, and then you can get a custom data part, so it says which location table, table number I'm looking for, and if it is, this is an international scope, a national scope, or a regional scope. So it's an advertisement of uh, TMC capabilities. So this is plotting all events on Google Maps, which is also your, useful for C if the messages make sense. So if you see a big chunk on events on, in Rome and Milan, you're set. I mean, it makes perfect, perfect sense. Now, video clip time. So we want to show you why injecting RDS CMC is good and why you can get laid because of that. So we thought it was very, very important to stress that point. So we got a video for you. In this video, we mentioned the first conference, the video was shown, but you're not going to see that because I will be redubbing that part with my magic ninja skills. So just pretend you're not hearing that. So it's a very cheesy movie. Do we want to see the cheesy movie? Yeah. Good Defcon. Prepare to be rocked. Okay, darling. Let's go home. Okay, sweetheart. <laughs> I love my new toy. I know. You love it more than me. I trust in my nuts. But I can see the house. No, no, no. Oh, fuck you. Shut up. Where the fuck are we? Look how good is a navigator now, huh? Who the hell are you? Ha! I'm the evil hacker! And with my portable device, I injected RDS CMC messages onto your navigator! So now, you are in my power! I know! You are I know, useless! I know! I yes. My navigator! Yes! Who are you? I'm the evil hacker, and I have all this knowledge, because I follow... Defcon! The best conference in the world. Yes, you're the real man. Can you feel my power? Yes. Love me. Got the chick! <laughs> Case in point, it works. But, warning. Your experience may differ. You cannot vouch for that. So that's why we wanted to do that. So, does it work now? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, just a second. You fix. Good. So, injecting RDS CNC messages. So, we use a commercially available RDS encoder, 40 bucks. You can build your own. We just didn't have time for it. It's very easy to do. And we can, you can talk to this thing using I square C bus, which is a very, very common bus. So, this, game, this thing comes with a software that you can use for you know, crafting very standard messages about radio tuning. You, we just build our own code so that we can fully send whatever we want. Okay? 
So we set all parameters, PI, PTY, and so on. Then we got the free, uh, free, free RDS blocks that we can program as we want. And the check word is automatically computed by the chipset, okay? So we don't need to bother about that. And there, you got a link, you can download the code, and then we can do whatever we want with it. So this is how we do it. So the code is very crude. So crude is code rushed and ugly because of unexpected deadline. And you modify the source code, and there you can set whatever you want to send. So you set the PI buff, the name of the station, and then you got your, those two custom fields. So you set hexadecimal values there. So we can see the first one is 85, which translated into binary, so we got 10000101, and the first four bits are the group, which then is A, so it's an 8A group. Or we can see there we got the event, which is 01101100, which goes to 108, and then that's queuing traffic, okay? So we can see binary, that's like being Neo and the matrix. Cool. Forget assembler, doing binary is way cooler. And then you can set the location table, okay? So you know the location table, you can set the, the, your destination of the message. If you don't know about that, you just sniff some messages, you correlate that with what, what, whatever you're seeing on your navigation system, and then you can build your own table if you cannot dump it from the navigation system. So this is how it works. We got our I2C application talking with parallel port on the, to the R, RDS encoder, okay? And then, very important thing, we got a FM transmitter, which is that thing, the thing that looked like a bomb, okay? So main components, one encoder, one transmitter, one peak again, we need a digital PLL tuning, and then an antenna. So for building the FM transmitter, which is one of the you know, most critical part here, it, it needs to be very, very stable, because we're not sending audio information. We're sending a digital signal, so it needs to be very stable, and so that's why we need a digital PLL tuning. And also, we also want to be able to uh, use whatever frequency we want. We, we just do not want to be to stick on one frequency because we want to hijack existing channels and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's how we do it. And then we add a big antenna, but actually we use a small cable now because we don't want to piss off other broadcasters. That would be very bad. Of course, we didn't try it, right, with a big antenna. We didn't, you know, like hijack soccer matches and stuff in Italy. We totally didn't do that. So this is the injection circuitry, RDS encoder and the FM transmitter, okay? So transmitted FM. So can be tuned to arbitrary frequencies. It's important to have a stable one. We can cover long distances very easily. So if you push one watt of energy on that antenna, you can get two miles very, very easily, okay? Uh, otherwise, you can just put a, a cable, so you see that light going on? That's working an antenna right now, and then your range is like one or two meters, it's very, very close. So it depends on what you want to do. You either want to like hide yourself in a tunnel and waiting for cars passing through, and you know they are not going to see the, the real signal because they're in a tunnel, but you're inside with an antenna, right? So they're going to pick it up. Or if you want to target only one car, you just build a very small device, you can stay in that one box, and then you hide it in the trunk. <laughs> so they drive, they got this thing in the trunk, they're never going to be fine now, and you're not going to affect anyone else. So, you know, local laws is not going to find about it, okay? So that's cool, that's evil. And so, that's our antenna, the sterilizer. He was staying out all the time, so resistance is huge. No kids for you, no more. And I had to stay inside a car to check that everything was working properly. Well protected by my Faraday cage. Anyway, so video clip time. Let's show to you what happens when we obscure uh, a radio station, okay? So we tested these on Saturday and Sundays at the times where soccer matches are being you know, played. And we're in Italy, remember? So that's like major. We tune to our channel. As long as we get close, we can hear this static noise. So that's our channel, this one. That's 102.5, that's one of the major broadcasters in Italy. And you can hear nothing. We move away from it, and then you can hear real radio going on, okay? So that's what happened.
So we can obscure radio station. That's cool. So what we want to do is we want to find a way for hijacking the channel and sending our messages. So we have two ways for doing that. One way is why we hijack an existing channel. So we, we obscure your soccer match because we know that on that channel they're sending our DSTMC messages. And we send eight, eight groups, so D message itself. Because your satellite navigation system already seen all of those free A groups. It knows already that it wants to tune on that channel. So what happens? You got your navigation system, it says 10 seconds on every frequency. It gets a free A group. Okay, that's a good channel for me. I'm going to catch that information. I'm going to get back to you for getting messages. And so on and so on and so on. So on a navigation system, you usually get two tuners. One that looks in cycles looking for free A groups. And then the other one that goes on the groups that, were, that on the channels that were good getting 8A groups information. So what we do here, we forget about advertising our channel, we just you know, hijack an existing one, we completely obscure your soccer match, and then we send whatever we want to send, okay? You need to be careful with the timing, but it's you know, very efficient and worse. Also, there's one very important thing to keep in mind. The tuner of your radio in the car is different from the tuner of the SATNAV system, okay? So this doesn't necessarily mean that the channel you're listening to is the same one that the satellite navigation is you know, detecting TMC messages on, okay? So you need to be very unlucky if, he's listening, if the driver is listening to the same channel, okay? But if that's a concern and you really wanna be stealthy, you can take a non-use frequency, whatever, you know that in that region there are not, it's not going to be used and you broadcast three A groups plus eight A groups. So you fake the whole thing. And then your satellite navigation system is going to lock up on there and the nice icon will go from red to green and that means you're in business, okay? So, of course, what happens is that on that specific channel, you won't hear anything, okay? But there's one thing you can do for being stealthy. So most radio stations, they broadcast on the main frequency and then you got a secondary frequency, okay? You, you do not have the same frequency in all over Italy. Uh, you move around and then you change the frequency, okay? And RDS radio systems are able to pick up the frequency automatically. You don't need to do anything. That's because there are some packets which send you the alternate frequencies. So what you can do, you can, have, uh, you can add an additional receiver in this circuit and then you can, get, you can tune on the secondary frequency for the channel you're hijacking. So that way you can remix your original audio in. So you can remix your soccer match again so that you won't be pissed off and you will never notice that I'm unjacking your channel. The only difference would be that the power will be, will be a little, uh, you know, it will be a, lit, a bit less powerful than that. So it's very easy to do so you can be completely, well, almost completely selfie, okay? So let's demo what we're going to do here, okay? It's up to you. So, applause! It's talking! Give me a console, bro. There. Not Black Earth. Oh, sorry. Mm. You should talk. Uh, <clears throat> or they get asleep. Andrea? Yes. We have a network problem. Oh, we got network problems. So, we're not supposed to have network problems. You know, we're hackers. This goes here. This goes here. Maybe that's your problem. This one goes there. Which goes here. <laughs> that's so lame, you know? They're going to remember this issue. Is that right, Peter Ras? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Don't let me down, please. Se no lo switch che non funziona. Attaccalo direttamente. Attacca direttamente il cavo. Attacca direttamente il cavo. Non ci arriva. Well, okay, let's skip this. We maybe show you at the QA session. Okay, oh, we got it. Stealthy. It's your fucking switch. Okay. So, 
so what we're going to show you, so we got everything on the board. So what we're doing, we're injecting and sniffing at the same time, okay? So we're using one PC for everything. So we got the tuner there, okay? And we got an antenna there, okay? So that sniffs. And then, okay. And then we got a F, don't do that. <laughs> and then we got our F enter. <laughs> okay, okay. If you fucking do that again, <laughs> you'll be sorry. So then we got the injection system. So that LED over there, which is turned on, is our injection system. So our PC is sending and receiving the channel at the same time. So there we got the source code. So there we set our packet. So right now, what kind of packet is that? Uh, it's a Q in the Milano Genova that is a famous road. Yeah, so famous very road realistic. Road. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do now. Oh, so the PS, na the PS name is, uh, is realistic. Is DEFCON? Yeah. Oh, that's very realistic. <laughs> so right now, if you have an FM radio and you tune on the frequency we're using, you should see DEFCON as the name of the radio station, which is cool. So program the whole thing. Yeah, so uh, the PS name is DEFCON. The PI code is uh, 5218. And this is the payload of the packet that we want to inject. So Q in the Milano Genoa. One more beep. F. Let me <laughs> let me do that. Okay, so <laughs> now we <laughs> now we are writing on the EPROM uh, of um, of our RDS encoder. Okay. So that's over parallel port. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's quite so. So, okay. What was that? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Oh, this fucking keyboard. Okay. That's a ThinkPad. That's the best keyboard ever. <laughs> so shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. So this is the this is the stream the the RDS stream that we get uh, directly on the serial port of the PC. Um, That's okay. like the matrix. Isn't that cool? So we can, we can grab it. You can actually see the structure over there. You can see there's a, there's a line going there. There's a recurring set of numbers going from top left to bottom right. Okay? That's probably either our location code or DPI code. So you can see there's something going on over there. So now we can use our decoder. Uh, SRDSD minus T because we want uh, to see only the TMC packets. Uh, minus D, we can specify uh, a database location table. And so that's a very good quality signal. There are no bad. There's no bad data over there. In real life, if you have if you're tuned correctly, you see it's almost like that. You may get like one or two bad bits every like every packet or so. And but if you convert those to zero and one, it's going to be just fine. Okay. If you have a very very crappy signal, then it's like half of them is bad quality. Okay. Can Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you can talk now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now the PI code. Uh, one, two, eight. I don't remember. Uh, and the stream file. Okay. Uh, wrong PI now. Okay. So this is uh, the so output of so our. Um, so that's our packet. Is it? Does it show a queue? Okay. okay, so you can check that it's the same that we have uh, prepared uh, before. Uh, so the event code is uh, Q traffic. If you're pointing your finger on my laptop screen, that's not going to be very helpful for them, isn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not there yet, technology-wise. <laughs> okay, so maybe yeah. Apple is working on that, but I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. So the event code is our fucking Q traffic. Um, the the road code is Milano Genova, so you have also the link to Google Map. Uh, okay, so it works. Cool. Thanks, my fix. You don't deserve this spot. So, the fun part begins. What we can do? We can create cues: bad weather, rain, smog, fog fresh snow, thunderstorms, 
Silver Surfer, everything. We can create full car parks. Oh, Dad, I so want to go to the amusement park. You cannot. The car park is full. I'm sorry. So that could be useful if you have kids, right? Yeah, look, it's full. So overcrowded service areas. Oh, my God. That's kind of useless. I mean, if you got to go, you got to go, right? So, but anyway, it's there. Accidents, roadworks, and so on. It's not very exciting, but it's still nice. It gets much better though, okay? So that's an example, code 108, queue in traffic, okay? So you can see the, this, the icon over there. You can see that the road, instead of being red, is like bluish, because that's the affected road, okay? So there's a queue, and if we put it a version B to one, the satellite navigation system is going to say, oh, there's a queue, get lost. Closing road, we can close arbitrary roads, bridges, tunnels with a number of events. There are one, more than one events for that, okay? So what happens here, the set map will pop up the event set telling you the road is closed, which is very believable. I tend not to trust queues and accident messages because they might be old, okay? So I just go on. If I see a closed road, I might really believe that. My dad surely will believe that, so. But there's one interesting thing. If the closed road is encountered during recalculation, which happens all the times because you get in a tunnel, you lose the GPS signal, the, the route gets recalculated. You miss a turn, which happens all the time, especially in Italy, and the route gets recalculated. So if the road is closed, the navigation system is going to silently detour you. It's not going to tell you about it. So if you're driving my place and you know, don't know the road, I can close all the roads around you. You're going to miss a turn at some point and I can just detour you wherever I want. And then the hitman with a gun can, you know, shoot you because, oh. So that's bad. So this is also known as keep your parents from reaching home or keep your girlfriend from reaching home or keep your boyfriend from reaching home, whatever, just, you know, pick one. So that's closed roads. So we close the Trieste Venezia, which is just, you know, big road, okay? So you can see there, so that's the event list. And there on the road, you can see a closed sign and it's closed. And there's the pop-up, so we can detour or we can, you know, return. This is the silent detour thing. So the first image, that's my normal route to home, okay? You can see the blue line. Then I inject the message and we can see that it's closed and we can see that actually the route, it's different. Maybe you cannot see that very well, but trust me on there, trust me that, it's different, okay? So that's kind of bad. Security messages. The event table supports a number of security related messages. So this is where it gets fun. We doubt anyone ever used them so far. And you know, when the states you got TSA, Homeland Security, so imagine this, like you got president or something with an escort, okay? And these guys are trained to stop everything and the first sign of suspicion, okay? So what do you think it will happen if they see terrorist incident in the Salala navigation system? <laughs> they will go, oh fuck. <laughs> so that's bad. You can put a terrorist incident everywhere. So I don't know why they planned that in the standard, but it's there. Air raid, danger. So I imagine, you know, your FM broadcasting station, oh, we got an air raid on the highway, so maybe we should send a warning to our cars. And they're so polite that in the standard, you can send air raid stopped. You can, you know, go there. So you can, you can advertise the air raid and you can say, okay, look, it's done, so feel free, do your own thing, be merry on the way. So that's our air raid on our coast road, you know, that's, that's major. So, when I started working in the IT business, so I was, you know, trying to uh, make my dad understand so what was going on. So, hey dad, you know, I can hijack uh, system calls from the latest Linux kernel. And my dad went, get a life. So when I show him this picture, it was, oh wow, your job is cool. It was, oh, finally, 10 years after. So we're so sticking to these things. They're much, much better. So forget code for now. Car are cool. Air crash. And if you think that's not believable enough, so we put an aircraft near an airport over there. So you got your airport and you got your air crash. I mean, I would believe that even if I know that I can inject messages. So that, that's kind of major. Bomb alert. TSA would totally love this. You can put a bomb alert in a airport to, you know. That's bad. 
So, and of course, you can pop up these messages. Okay, so this will a security alert, stationary traffic. So code one five seven one. So let me show you. So this video clip will be World War Three on a highway. So I'm plotting my route. I want to go there. Toll road. Yes, I can pay. I wait five seconds. Nope, security alert, stationary traffic. There's the hacker over there. So, what shall I do? Oh, let me return, I don't trust this thing. So, let's see the event list and actually see what's going on. Bomb alert, security alert, air raid, close. War War Free on a highway. Funny messages. Bullfight. <laughs> so you can put a bullfight on a highway. <laughs> so I dream about a story about this one. So I imagine the European community, you know, having this big meeting. So and they're going for the event list, and you know, someone like the chairman is saying bullfight. Why do we have this? And the Spanish people go, "We got those. We asked for those." So that's my story. I think bullfight, they asked for that. You can get delays due to parade. So you can put a parade on a highway. That's cool. And then you can also put people on the road and then accident. Yeah, that would be fine. So there's one other cool thing. You can get a boxing match. So you can put a boxing match on a highway. But you know that when you get an accident in LA, a boxing match after that is not so unrealistic. So that kind of makes sense. And no, you cannot have a pony. I was so sad because of that. Anyway, implementation issues. So there are a number of implementation issues. So we thought when we were first doing this thing, okay, so we gotta be careful. We gotta match the PI with the frequency we're using. So it turned out if you're using PI code 6666, it doesn't occur. The navigation system is going to pick up your messages. So it's even much more easy to spoof messages. There are some codes which are allowed by the standard but are not supported, like total cance cancellation, you cannot cancel all the messages, but what you can do, you can cancel all the single ones, because you can only have one event per, lo per location, so you got your broadcast station sending a queue, okay, let me cancel that, sending an accident, okay, let me cancel that. So I can do another service and remove all the messages from the navigation system, okay, so they will go there even if there's a queue or something like that. There's a broadcast message which is not honored at all, so what we want to do is like pop up bomb alerts on all navigation systems even if there was no route at all being plotted. But we cannot do that, at least with, with our navigation system, maybe with some others you can do that. Diversion bit is totally ignored by most implementation, so you put it to zero, you send an accident, the car is going to pop up the event anyway. You put one to like snow, the car is going to ignore the event. So it's there, but it's not being used at all, okay? So we, accept other, we expect other navigation systems to have similar or even more interesting issues. You know, we only tried two because we don't want to you know, waste money on buying, on buying like 10 or 20 different navigation systems. So, but that's it. Encryption. So there is encryption. It's a very lightweight encryption. And it was used only for commercial services. So at some point, vendors got, OK, we would like to sell this service. But how can you sell this service? You're broadcasting, your station picks it up, you can see it. So what they find out, we can encrypt the location code. So what they do, they use a different encoding because it's not encryption at all for the location code. So a normal satellite navigation system is not going to have that location code, so it's not going to show you the message. If you pay subscription and you get an, the proper set of location codes, then you can see the message, okay? So the problem is that only the location code is encrypted, so you can actually see what's going on. And even if I don't know what the location code is, I can just modify everything else and then use the location code you sent, and then I, I'm in business. But the encryption are bitwise operations. So bitwise operation is not encryption. You can sniff there, you can get like 10 or 20 packets, you can correlate that with a real messages because you have a navigation system that works, and then you can find the key and do whatever you want. If you really wanna, uh, read and then hijack those messages. But we don't care because every navigation system is supposed to be able to receive commercial services if they have subscription as well as free messages. So I can just send my own messages and it's going to pick them up. 
is not relevant at all. So don't think about RJS DMC encryption as a security measure. It is not. It's just for discrimination. So what we've seen, can be trivially injected. You can get a chick because of that. So that's, you know, end of story. Drivers don't tend to have any security awareness. So if you use a computer, like, you know, you can get viruses and stuff nowadays. If you drive a car, would you expect that someone can do something like this? I don't think so. Well, now you can. So we don't think it's the end of the world. It's not like we attacked this protocol at all. I mean, it's very old. It was designed to reuse existing infrastructure, which makes perfect sense. But since they want to have your car doing more and more things with your navigation system, and it's vital that in the future we don't commit the same mistakes we did with our services and you know unencrypted protocols in the past for computers. So just please you use authentication, use encryption, whatever you want, give me integrity, but just don't let this thing clear text because maybe ten years from now we'll be very sorry if we made that kind of mistake. Also, cars have like a long lifespan. I cannot upgrade my car like I can do that with the software on my computer. And sure, I'm not going to change my car because I have a satellite navigation system which is vulnerable to these kind of things. So they have a very long lifespan. And that's why we use RDS CMC now, which is like way old. So we should be careful with that. And we hope the future protocols will have you know some security. So we got an official response from the people doing this protocol. It was very fun. Let me read it for you. The title of the article was Hacking TMC Unsuccessfully. Hello? <laughs> we did it. The first and overriding statement that should be made is that transmission of this type are directly analogous to pirate radio broadcasts and certainly will, in the case of Europe and the US, contravene each country's respective broadcasting legislation and laws. Oh, thank you that you're telling me it's illegal. I'm sure that will stop any attacker. So like killing people is illegal. Oh, we're safe. That's fine. <laughs> there is a chance that a false message could be decoded, but a degree of knowledge would have to be gained on the parameters of the message being coded. Like it's clear text, I can make it out, I can do whatever I want. The random use of any location code would result in a randomly located event. Also random choices of event codes may not cause a terminal to react. Did you see me using random codes? I don't think so. We know exactly what we can detect and we know exactly what we can send. So this is plain thought. And this was after our presentation was like, you know, available. Then there's a whole bunch of crap about this frequency will not be either in the main AF list or the secondary AF list broadcast in any of the tuning variants of the TMC. That's crap. It doesn't make sense at all. The radio station can do that. I can do that. There's no magic involved. This is not magic. And the last one is the most hilarious one. Service providers and broadcasters, I am sure, have many protection mechanisms and processes in place to prevent any legitimate access to their services within their infrastructure. So faith manages. So these guys are doing the protocol and they're sure people, you know, they have protection. So that's crap. So you can read the full response there and you can read our reply to their response there. So if you wanna. I, I didn't like extrapolate uh, sentences out of context, trust me on that. Never been so hard to convince people that clear text protocols are like bad, never. So the future, TMC is also supported over digital and satellite radio. It's harder to inject because you need to do more hardware and stuff, but it's the same thing. There's no encryption, there's no authentication going on. TPEG, this Transport Protocol Experts Group, is the new standard designed for placing TMC. They support encryption, but A, it's optional, and it's like encryption. So you got these bits, these are for encryption. They don't tell you what kind of uh, cipher you should use. They don't tell you anything about that. So I can use a null codec and you know that would be nice. So they really need to do stricter uh, definitions. And they, re they replied to us and it was very hard to convince them about the fact that it's a security issue. But you know they said that they will consider in the future having stricter requirements. So there's a new cool thing going on, which is GST, Global System for Telematics. It's an impressive project. BMW is backing it up and own people. So what I want to do, you put a credit card in your car, and then you can download services and system and traffic information. So smart. It's going to use PKI and SSL. So it, in theory, it should be hard to do anything about it, right? And it's very sad to realize that the, the encryption comes only when there's a commercial side on it. As soon as you put a credit card, then they want encryption, okay? So it's not that good. But anyway, so 
this thing will not happen, you know, anytime soon. But you know, we we're still going looking forward to play with that. Trust me on that. Similar system. So in US, you got also Microsoft DirectMan, uh, which is like RDS on steroids. So they use a subcurrent. They have 15 times the bandwidth of RDS system, and it works pretty well, and they have encryption going on there. And I read some um, papers, and it looks done properly. Of course, we didn't play with that, but it's promising. But of course, we cannot get any Europe at all, or everywhere else, because they cannot get that frequency license at all. That's a current license at all. So this is the end of our talk. We hope you enjoy that. And we can either get questions here or maybe we'll move to the QA uh, room so that we can answer to whatever questions you might have. So thank you very much. I hope it was fun for you. And as you can see, he has a future as a porn actor. <laughs>